Thursday's market closes mostly lower except for cattle futures. Don Rose U.S. Commodities is in with analysis. And Don, really another day where the grain's under severe pressure here. A lot of it uh, recessionary fears and a lot of technical selling pressure, right? Yeah, we did have a lot of technical selling pressure. We had a lot of bullish news, the peak of the bullish news, the pro farmer corn yield the beginning of the week, um, uh, and then the crop ratings couldn't respond to it. And since then, we've been kind of a liquidating type of market. I think you have to say we're marching to a crop. The seasonalities are negative. We got a three-day weekend squarely ahead of us, and uh, you know the harvest is not that far away. And then, like you said, the recessionary fears uh, are bubbling to the top. The dollar hit some new highs for the move. Um, the raw commodity, we're not seeing uh, buying interest by the funds like we did before. So we're seeing actually some new selling coming in. So um, COVID lockdowns in China continuing. So it's a, it's a market that's soft. Technical damage here done uh, the middle of the week. Yeah, let's talk about that. November beans closing below $14. And so how much farther down do you see us going? Yeah, you know, we tried the upside uh, earlier, uh, close to $15, half. We could not push through uh, new levels to the upside. So like we say in this business, if you don't go up, you go down. So now we're trying the downside. We break under uh, technical support at 14. Our technical stuff broke down. There's gap targets often uh, are, uh, are targets, uh, Michelle, in this market. And 1349 and a quarter has been sitting out there. So that's a downward target short term. And then $13 if the, the uh, crop continues to get bigger. Did we do technical damage to the corn market today, Don? Yeah, the corn, very much the same thing. We tried the upside on the corn. We ran into that big resistance on December corn, uh, 682. We go to 683 area, could not get up to seven, let alone the gap area, 720 and a half, eight and a half. We reverse. Uh, start to see some new fund selling coming into the market and the uh, close under the 661 support. Uh, filled the gap 665 and three quarters. Um, that now uh, is behind us and 631 on D's corn, then $6 a round number. Then there's that downward gap 584 and a quarter. So we're running from a, a big broad range, a big broad trading range, but now trying the downside, Michelle. Right. And it certainly did not help when you got crude oil down in that dollar index higher. And certainly uh, you felt that in spades in that wheat market today. Yeah, the wheat market, you know, it's been in a big, broad trading range, about a 60 uh, cent trading range. Tried to push to the upside um, just really on some uh, nervousness, um, maybe with the Ukraine again, uh, bombing of some ports. But, you know, really it was uh, one that couldn't follow through to the upside. Ukraine shipping wheat, our wheat supplies up north are large. And so we're seeing the liquidation come into the wheat market. We just haven't been able to make any headway uh, up or down. And the wheat uh, corn balance sheets are coming back in line as far as the spread. Yeah. So, like I said, the wheat market may be under pressure as well from that dollar being higher. The dollar now making some new highs for the move again. How much higher do you see the dollar going and how negative will that be for the commodities sector going forward? Well, we're sitting around 109 right now. Remember when the dollar came on uh, board uh, initially back when, when was it was in the 80s, uh, we were like 120. So your target probably has to be that. But, you know, the dollar, uh, you can't say enough about it, Michelle. We're not competitive in the world market on corn with Brazil. We're not competitive with uh, wheat or corn out of Ukraine. So that's a real issue when you look at the competition. And now squarely, South America soybean planting is going to start here the uh, middle of the month. Um, and then, you know, they're going to have some harvest. Uh, the production there could be up a billion bushels. Harvest starts there in the middle of January. Yeah, that's certainly a headwind for that bean market. But we have seen some really good end user demand down at these price levels. Well, and that brings up another point, Michelle, the export sales, um, you know, the government's had some real issues with that. Apparently, they're going to try and get export sales going again September 15th. But um, we're just kind of in an unknown. But we have had some very good sales this week to, uh, um, you know, China, some unknowns, but the market hasn't responded to it. And that's not a good sign, Michelle. When you get bullish news and you don't respond, that's a negative. Yeah, we've had sales like five days in a row, to your point. Um, just got to ask you about this export sales report. Could USDA have picked a worse time than the end of a marketing year to try to make a change like this? 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the change is that they're trying to switch from uh, one computer system to another computer system, an old to a new. And you're exactly right. From a timing standpoint, you know, it's probably the worst time to try it. But now uh, they're trying to cover their tracks going backwards. But um, we'll see. Yep. Timing's poor uh, right at this time frame. Where we're trying to figure out the demand side of the market. Absolutely. Cattle market uh, saw a little bit of a bounce today uh, the lower corn market helping out. But how much recovery do you think we can really get in that market, especially with a lot of headwinds, including lower cash trade here? Well, you know, remember this, that we've got a cyclical bull market in front of us. That is so well documented. I think, uh, you know, do you know a cattle person that's uh, got a negative bone? You know, we'll see. But um, What's happened to the meat market in general is you put some premiums into the market, feed premiums. So you have to watch a number of things. Watch the uh, break evens, watch if the feed values come down. And then like we have to win a recessionary environment in the olden days, uh, so goes the stock market, so goes the beef demand. So hasn't been the case this summer. In fact, it's been a contra seasonal strong demand. Um, I think you'd have to say for now, um, the fundamentals are strong and the technicals are going to move back and forth. But we got some premium dialed into the cattle market. Hard to be bearish, but I think it's how much bullishness is dialed into the market, Michelle. And Hogs, do you see much more downside risk here? Cash market keeps going lower. Well, seasonality is on hogs. Seasonally, this is the wrong time of year to be friendly on the hog market. The cash market usually scores a high. It looks like it scored a high. I think the big problem we have in the hog markets, the discounts just, they got record large. At one time, December was $30 a hundred weight below the index. I mean, that's a record large. The normal is about $10, $11 this time of year. So uh, the futures market wants to go lower. The cash hasn't come down fast enough, but it feels like we've got more weakness to the downside. Um, you know, some of the technical targets into the mid to low 70s on Ds and uh, October. Uh, but, you know, when you look at the long term on hogs, a lot of buying interest in the next summer months around 90. Okay, thanks for joining us, Don Rose with U.S. Commodities.